if I'm telling God that he has my yes, I want it to be yes, period. Not yes, but you know, that's just, that's just not how it works. Hey everyone and welcome in. My name is Tulu and on this channel I make faith-based videos to encourage you as you fight the good fight of the faith daily. In today's video I wanted to talk to y'all about something that God has been working on and growing me in and that is the area of conditional obedience. I don't know about y'all but there are times when it's really easy to obey God. You know I'm like God, is that all you need? Like, I got you. Matter of fact, is there anything else I can do for you? You know, but then there are times when I'm really looking at him like, I'm sorry, you want me to do what? And it just, it ends up not getting done. You know, I try to be the type of person that doesn't make excuses as to why I can't do something, but it's the way that I'm really able to come up with entire dissertation length essays outlining all the reasons why I can't and shouldn't do some of the things that God asks me to do. You know, it's it's honestly ridiculous. I'm sure God probably gets so sick of me. Like, come on, girl. Not every time debate, you know, not every time arguments and questions. Sometimes just say yes and do it. As I've been reading through the Bible lately, I have really been inspired but also challenged by some of the examples of faith and obedience that we see in some of these stories like wow god can really instruct abraham to take his son go up to the top of the mountain and offer him up as a burnt sacrifice and he just does it you know like no questions no wondering what he just he just does it and i can't even start a conversation with a stranger that i feel like god is calling me to talk to you know like or God can really give Noah, you know, these complex instructions on how to build a huge boat and fill it with two of every kind of animal. And there's not even any type of wondering why, questioning, what am I doing this for? He just does it. He just does it. And yet I can't turn off the TV show and spend time in prayer when I feel like God is trying to spend some time with me, you know, like it's not a good look is not a good look and it's really been coming for me lately it has i've realized that yes there are times that i can be obedient to god but it's mostly only when it's convenient for me you know and the weather is just nice i've just had a nice meal i got a good night's rest and the vibe is just right right i can't even imagine the amount of opportunities that i have missed to be used by god or to hear a word from god all because I just wasn't in the mood to be obedient, you know? And that's just not how I wanna live my life. If I'm telling God that he has my yes, I want it to be yes, period. Not yes, but, you know, that's just, that's just not how it works. So I've really been asking God to help me in this area and give me a level of obedience that doesn't come with a list of conditions and doesn't need me to be asking a ton of questions you know before i do what god calls me to do i was reminded of one of the many great examples of obedience in the bible and this one involves a man named saul who y'all are probably familiar with as paul and a man named ananias okay the story is found in acts chapters 8 and 9 and i'll give you a brief background recap to kind of set the stage okay so we're in a time where it is post the death and resurrection of jesus okay and the disciples and apostles are going around and witnessing to the life of jesus right and they're basically calling everyone to repent of everything that they have done i.e. killing Jesus the Messiah, so that their sins can be forgiven and they can be saved, okay? Well, the Jewish leaders and officials don't like that they're doing this and start persecuting the disciples and apostles of Jesus. They end up, you know, putting them in prison, they end up beating them, some of them are stoned to death, and um, there's one disciple in particular, Stephen, who gets stoned to death and it's at this time that Saul is introduced to the scene okay he is introduced in the bible as someone who approved of the execution of Stephen which honestly is kind of crazy now that we know you know who Paul goes on to become but 
that's how he's introduced in the Bible as somebody who uh, approved of the execution, okay? And he ends up becoming a leading figure in persecuting followers of Christ. He's sending them to prison, threatening them, and he even goes so far as to go and try to get permission from, you know, the officials to be able to catch anyone that he finds following Jesus and putting them in prison. Okay, so he's just done this, gotten his permission slip, and he's on his way to the city of Damascus. And as he's on his way there, he has an encounter with God. God is asking him, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he ends up blinding Saul for three days and tells him to go into the city, Damascus, and there he will receive further instructions. So now we get to my favorite part. This is a story of obedience that never fails to challenge me. Let's start in chapter 9 verse 10. It says, Now there was a disciple at Damascus named Ananias. The Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Here I am, Lord. And the Lord said to him, Rise and go to the street called Straight. And at the house of Judas, look for a man of Tarsus named Saul. For behold, he is praying. And he has seen in a vision a man named Ananias come in and lay hands on him so that he may regain his sight. It says, But Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much evil he has done to your saints at Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priests to bind all who call on your name. But the Lord said to him, Go, for he is a chosen instrument of mine to carry my name before the Gentiles and kings and children of Israel. For I will show him how much he must suffer for the sake of my name. It says, So Ananias departed and entered the house. And laying hands on him, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road by which you came has sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately something like scales fell from his eyes and he regained his sight. Then he rose and was baptized and taking food, he was strengthened. The story gets me every single time. Okay, because y'all, Ananias knew who Saul was. He had heard about the things that he was doing to people like him, okay? And yet here God was asking Ananias to not only be, you know, in the same vicinity as him, but to get so close so that he could be able to lay hands on him. You see, if this were me, the excuses would have started as soon as God said Saul's name. I'm just, I'm, I'm just being honest, okay? Like, why would I leave where I am, big comfy, and go and start messing with a man who wants me in prison or dead? You know, it's giving, it's giving, am I okay? It couldn't be me. What I really appreciate here is that we see some of this hesitation come through from Ananias. You know, he doesn't go so far as to question God, but he does try to explain the severity of the situation to God just in case he wasn't aware already, you know, and he essentially is pleading his case as to why it might not be the best option for him to go. Now, what we have here, y'all, is a valid excuse, okay? There is clear opposition to Ananias, okay? He has seen what has happened to people who have come before him, and he does not want the same thing to happen to him. That is understandable. Me not wanting to do something because I'm not in the mood is simply not a good enough excuse, okay? And if it were me, if I was Ananias, it still would not have gotten done. I'm just, I'm just being honest with you. But we see that after God instructs him again to go, he goes with no resistance, no questions, and he does everything that God commanded him to do. Ananias' obedience leads to Saul's eyes being opened and he soon after repents and is baptized and then he goes on to become one of the greatest apostles, writing a majority of the New Testament. I could only imagine how different the story would have been had Ananias not been obedient to do what God asked him to do. He couldn't quite understand the why, but when we take a step back, we can see how God had a bigger plan and was orchestrating things together for a bigger purpose. This reminded me that God needs people who are willing to say yes and be used as a vessel in his plans, you know? 
It could be for the smallest task or it could be for something big like it was for Ananias, but we never know what part our obedience is gonna play in the bigger picture, in the larger story. And what really stood out to me about this story too is the time sensitivity of the matter. You know, we see that God blinded Saul and sent him into Damascus and said that he would be met by a man named Ananias. So if Ananias had not said yes, I don't know how the story would have played out. You know, like God would definitely be able to work it out in some other way, but we see how it was so important for Ananias to respond quickly, respond with, you know, some urgency and go and do what God told him to do so that the plan can continue going smoothly. And this just reminds me that, you know, when God instructs me to do something, I can't just be sitting on it, you know, and just lag on him. But I got to be quick with it. I got to say yes and I got to just do it. So. It's really challenging me. It's really been encouraging to me. And my prayer is that we would all be people who give God our yes, no matter what the situation is and with no questions asked. I hope this video encouraged you to reconsider, you know, asking the 3000 questions or making the 100 excuses next time God asks you to do something, you know. I will definitely be reconsidering. Let me know in the comments down below if there are any ways that you know you should be responding in obedience right now but aren't and how you'll be taking steps to start saying yes. And until next time, let's keep fighting the good fight of the faith and I will see you in my next video. Bye!